Hey everybody, Jason here from AV Pro Edge, and today I have Casey from Josh AI. Casey, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to the, the second part of this, this uh, webinar series we have going on here. This is going to be a fun Good. one today. Yeah, so guys, uh, in case you missed it, uh, Casey and I talked for, for an, an hour, a little bit more than an hour, uh, last week or the week before on Josh AI and, and their voice uh, commands and all the great stuff that they're doing for automation. And unfortunately, we just kind of ran out of time to show everybody the, all the things we wanted to show. So this is sort of a follow-up or, or a part two, if you will, to the, to the original Josh uh, webinar that we did together. Uh, what we wanted to show for you guys today, uh, we want to get a little more technical uh, and show you guys some of the setup and some of the programming and whatnot. Uh, you guys at Josh were kind enough to send me a micro, so I've got that here set up ready to go. And just so you guys can see what's going on in the room, I'm going to switch my camera over. And what you guys will notice is that we're running a uh, LG TV. This is actually my bedroom system. So this is going to be a uh, LG yeah, TV second. with a uh, Yamaha receiver, <laughs> AV Pro <laughs> matrix switch. And we also have a Sonos Connect in here as well. So as we're going through the presentation today with Casey, uh, we'll be doing some kind of voice commands and sort of some some hands-on demos, if you will. So um, Casey, just to kind of uh, get everybody up to speed real quick, let's uh, let's give everybody, in case they may, maybe missed part one, let's give everybody sort of an intro to Josh and, and what you guys are all about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I heard Josh pipe up there too. Yeah, uh, did, he's, did he's, pipe up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's ready to control some some audio and video, but we haven't put it together yet. So soon enough here. Um, but but yeah, you know what, what we're doing with Josh, uh, for those of, of uh, you who maybe you didn't catch the last webinar, uh, we are a, a full automation system. Voice is our go-to interface. Uh, we also have a great app that uh, we'll be able to show off as well on, on Jason's iPad here uh, later on once we get everything configured on our end. Uh, but the main goal, whether it's with voice, um, our, our app, uh, going forward with the AI development on more so proactively recommending things to you, is that we want to make the experience for clients easy to control you know, these different technologies in their home, uh, the nuances of, you know, in our case, audio video distribution and how we can route things and, and get to that proper content as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, for you guys as the installer as well, uh, making it a really easy process that, you know, isn't, isn't a lot of overhead or programming uh, where it's more of a plug and play approach. So we'll talk more about that uh, as we go through our configuration process and then just uh, showing you the auto discovery uh, that we have as well with all our device integrations. Great, great. In case, uh, in case people did want to maybe check out, um, I know you guys probably have uh, on your YouTube page a bunch of little videos and stuff and demos and stuff you guys have done at Cedia. Uh, can people find those videos where on your YouTube page, right? Yeah, absolutely. Our, our CEO uh, has his YouTube page. I'll, I will, um, at the end of this sh uh, show here, happy to post a link to that page so everybody can, cool. can check it out too. Uh, but if you go to our website, uh, just Google Josh at AI, it should be the first thing that pops up, or mm -hmm. uh, feel free to shoot us an email, hello at josh.ai. Uh, you know, our team is, is more than happy to point you in whatever direction you may need to, to go. Sure, and guys, I'll just tell you from just personal experience, I've been going through their online training modules and stuff, and there's some excellent content in there uh, for distribution, automation, voice, all the things that, that Josh is mind-blowingly awesome at. Uh, coming down, all your guys' features of security and everything is just—it's such a great system. So, if you want to kind of familiarize yourself with with it, guys, feel free to check out some of those YouTube videos. There, there's some good content there. Uh, cool. So, uh, Casey, with that being said, man, uh, what do, what do you want to show the folks first? What do, what do you want to start with? Yeah, I mean, we might as well might as well dive right into it uh, and, sure. and go into the Josh portal here. So, great. Um, I'll I'll you know poke around a little bit, show everybody what what we got uh, going there, and then uh, you know explain. Our configuration process as we go. So, sure. Let's see so guys, uh, Casey's going to share his screen here with us in just a moment. And what you'll notice, uh, there's a there's kind of a bar, if you will, in the middle of your screen. Uh, if you want to make um, Casey's screen a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, you can grab that bar and kind of drag it up and down or left or right or whatever. If you want to see his screen a little bit bigger, feel free to do that. So uh, cool. All right, sweet. All right. So you're seeing seeing your master bedroom here, Jason. Mm -hmm. awesome. That's everything. So. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, you know, one of the cool things as well, just to point out, is that, you know, I'm located in California and I'm able to work on your system in Florida. Yes. From, yes. You know, from, from our, our portal here. So there's remote access no matter where you are as the installer. Uh, doesn't, you know, don't have to necessarily roll a truck or anything like that to uh, make sure that everything is dialed in with a, with a draw system. So 
just to give everybody a little glimpse at our web portal, the interface, uh, this is you know your interface as the installer to really put together everything. And I wanna, before I jump into things, uh, dive into our diagnostics page because this is where you would go to see and make sure that once Josh is connected to the network, we uh, basically are discovering everything. And uh, we unplugged one of Jason Sonos players just to get out of the way here. Um, so we had our, our proper AV devices in the master bedroom. Um, I can always bring that device back if I wanted to. Uh, but basically we're seeing here that we have, you know, all, all his Sonos players, his Roku, uh, in certain cases, the MAC addresses of those devices, the IP addresses. And this was giving us an idea of what Josh has to play with in that environment. We have our AV Pro Edge, the LG TV. All these devices were discovered almost instantly, if not instantly, uh, right when Josh got on the network. So we make that auto discovery and then that that process of you know ensuring that we're finding and detecting everything as clean and as simple as possible. I, I noticed that Casey when I set up the app on the iPad, um, all I did was connect to the Josh and all of a sudden there was a huge list of things already there. I didn't have to put in anything or anything. It was it was super easy. Yeah, that's that's one of the really exciting, you know aspects of our integration, whether it's with Lutron, Sonos, Control 4, Crestron, as long as you've kind of done that that homework beforehand of before mm -hmm. connecting certain uh, drivers or modules in the case of another control system or, uh, you know, just you, you're working with our compatible products, uh, you can set a micro through the app and then right when it gets online, start controlling things through our, you know, through our app and through voice as well, uh, mm -hmm. pretty much right away, um, which is, you know, really just a, a jaw dropper for a lot of a lot of people in the industry. Sure. Uh, and guys, too, just real quick, I, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but as always with all of our webinars, the question box is wide open, guys. So if you do have any questions as we're going through here with Casey, feel free to type those in and, and we'll get those questions over. Yeah, keep them, keep them coming. There were some good ones last time. Yeah, uh, sure. so, uh, And then just one thing I wanted to highlight as well. Uh, there are in certain cases like for TVs um, as well as you know, maybe a uh, Lutron homework system where you need to enter a Telenet login. Uh, there are various devices. We'll see that Pandora needs to be authorized. With Sonos, the nice thing is we actually pull in all of your music streaming services. So we have uh, Jason's accounts here. Uh, we could always refresh that if he added a new account. And we have all the Sonos uh, speakers that we are communicating to displayed here. Uh, in Pandora's case, the way that we've built that integration is a little bit different. It's also uh, just because of some of the other work we're doing with other audio streamers, uh, Pandora is kind of its own separate entity right now. So you'd go in here and authorize your Pandora account. However, for the best Josh experience, we'd recommend having one of the three premium services being Apple Music, Spotify, or Tidal. Uh, that gives you the really granular ability to not only search manually, but also with voice, ask for artists, albums, songs, um, you know, as specific as you want to get. And we'll be able to play with that in about 20 minutes or so here um, once we get everything put together. Uh, but for example, one of the nice things in our interface is that we also give our installers basically all the instructions. If something does need authorization, like the LG TV, which we already took care of before mm -hmm. jumping on here, uh, where we have our step-by-step -step process of generating the proper key, authorizing that LG TV and you know, getting it synced up with Josh, ready to you know, be connected either directly with HDMI inputs, with a receiver, with an EV Pro switch, whatever the, the configuration may be. And that was that was actually something that was new to me, Casey. You know, as as intimately as I know these TVs, especially when it comes to like the picture menus and stuff like that. Um, you know, you taught me a cool little trick, and I didn't even know about this. But um, going in to authorize that TV, you had to generate a pin code and a couple other steps. But you guys have the instructions right there uh, in front of your face. So when you're setting this up, you just follow the steps one by one, and, and you'll be set up. And I think we had it set up in maybe a minute, maybe two at the most. It was real easy. Yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was fun yesterday, today, you know, we can, we can get things firing pretty quickly on our end. Oh, so, sure. Yeah, we want to yeah. emphasize that, that simplicity, that efficiency uh, for, mm -hmm. you know, not only clients, but installers as well, making sure that things are, are running smoothly. Mm -hmm. So to you know, jump right into the AV uh, config here, this is our, our homepage where you'll see uh, kind of like that diagnostics page. We have a list of, on this page, all of our AV devices. and You'll see our Sonos players, our Roku, Yamaha receiver here, and you'll notice that we have these little action bubbles here saying, you know, hey, these devices that 
you know, need, need sources or need some sort of assignment, um, you know, I, I, we need that information. So it's, it's plug and play to a point with Josh, but there's still some, you know, we're only as smart as you dictate to us mm-hmm. as, as the installer, you know, knowing the HDMI or AV inputs that, that all these uh, devices are going through. So to get started, I want to assign my inputs to the uh, AV Pro, the 8x8 switch that, that Jason has. And we got our, our Roku is on input one, right, Jason? That is correct. All right. So go in here, toss in the Roku. It's that easy. It's connected now to input one. I could also add uh, a couple of nicknames to this if I wanted to. I don't know if the Roku would necessarily be a good fit, but if you're in a larger project where you have, you know, a his and hers cable box or sure. you know, maybe a his and hers Roku, you could, uh-huh. you know, name it Jason's Roku, for example. And then, you know, tell Josh when you're in that room, turn on Jason's Roku, TV turns on, input switches, and you're right there. And it, and it sets that that scene, however, however you want to do that. Excellent. So for fun, we'll call this Jason's Roku right now. All right, so now on the output side, uh, we know that our, our AV Pro uh, switch here, that's going into the receiver, right? And that's going through output one. Correct. So we see, and that's part of the logic in our configuration process as well, is that we are showing you these other devices, whether it's the TV or the receiver itself, mm-hmm. uh, that you know the, we know these devices need some sort of connection throughout this process. So we're gonna put them at the top here and basically, you know, kind of uh, veer you towards or suggest that, you know, we think this is one of these devices is going to be what you want to put together here and, and assign. So I'll throw it on the, the Yamaha bedroom receiver. Here we go. And now that I've added my Yamaha to the mix, I'm going to go back to my EV setup page. Scroll down to my EV receiver, assign my inputs. And now We'll see that I have my HDMIs, I have my other inputs as well. And we have our, our um, input. There was an HDMI 2 in there, but I think that was for the TV. So we're still on HDMI 1 right, yes. for the TV. Okay, Correct. you got it. So now we see that this you know kind of top suggestion now, because we've already told the AV Pro switch that it's going into the Yamaha, uh, now that top suggestion up here is the AV Pro switch, because we've already you know kind of done half of that equation. On our that's end. great yeah that's like it the the fact that it's kind of it already kind of knows what you want to do it kind of suggests the 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 product that makes the most sense that you're going to do next that that's excellent because now the integrator doesn't have to go through a huge list of things boom it's just right there on top you guys kind of already provide that yeah it's exactly it's it's you know we we try to do as much of the work as we can or be as intuitive sure. as we can uh, that's but, great you know you guys you guys are the experts out there we're just mm-hmm. we're just trying to help along the way no that's awesome and then with our other inputs here, let's see, we have, let's see, on our receiver, we have AV2, is that Sonos? Right? Uh, AV2 is the Sonos Connect, you got it. Got it, so now this is a case where if we had, uh, you know, another distribution, uh, you know, with a Sonos Connect through the AV Pro, we could totally do that and have it running around uh, the entire home's, you know, audio distribution mm-hmm. system. In this case, we have a, like a single room, you know, media room environment where we have our video source going through the, the switch. Uh, but then we have our, our Sonos more so contained uh, to that, that receiver. And then that logic will take over where whether I want to switch between Roku or Sonos or if there are any other video sources that we wanted to incorporate in here. Um, Josh now knows that these any source that you would plug in here on the receiver um, is going to be available in that room. And the output in that room is going to be our LG TV on the Mm -hmm. HDMI side. And then the main audio, this is a case where we don't have a a discovered speaker. For example, we we discover each Sonos device on your network based off its IP address. Um, We have similar integrations with DSPs and amplifiers, and we we automatically find these things. However, in this case where you have a – what we like to call a dummy speaker, or as it's labeled here, a custom output. Uh, this is a case where we haven't discovered that there's, you know, in-wall or in-ceiling speakers that are wired back to something here. Mm-hmm. And because of that, uh, we're creating this this custom output, being the master bedroom. 
where we're now telling Josh that, okay, there's a speaker in this room because we know that the Sonos Connect or port or amp or whatever, you know, that, that black box is that's getting us these sources um, is able to be streamed in this zone. So that looks good to me so far. And now our last order of business is to take care of our LG TV. And you'll notice these little one notification icons. So if you're like me and, and super OCD about mm -hmm. red notification icons on apps and everything else that we have nowadays, um, this is uh, you know something that we have here just again signaling that you know the in this case the Yamaha receiver the AV Pro switch these are are at this point polished they have inputs they have outputs assigned everything is good to go um, but you know kind of pinging you again just making sure that we have all of our ducks in a row mm -hmm. um, as we put together these you know more complex AV systems sure. Uh, and then let's see, HDMI 2 was our receiver. Yep, we're HDMI 2 on the on the TV. You got it. Cool. And then for the audio output of the TV, uh, Jason, we didn't, I don't think we actually covered this earlier, but uh, do you have like a speaker bar or something that's going through that receiver or? No, d d uh, that Yamaha receiver is just running a traditional 5.1 setup. Okay. So we can choose to, in, in fact, I think we, we did make that Sonos Connect fixed. So we'll have the receiver kind of controlling the variable volume. Sure. Yeah. So, but this is a case where, again, if you have, you know, no matter what your your audio configuration is in that room, uh, you know, we can basically have the receiver now driving that, um, that volume control as well. Great. I'm just going to confirm that too while you're moving on to the next thing. Okay, yeah, that's set to fixed. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, awesome. So now I'm poking around all of Jason's house now. I got all his all his rooms here, and uh, in his master bedroom now we have our uh, master bedroom audio. So this is the, the connect that we just put together. Uh, we have our speaker here, and let's see, did that? Is that that Play Five that just popped up? Um, should not be the play five. I unplugged. Yeah, we got rid of that. I wonder yeah. what that's doing there. We check something on our end. Oh, sure. Guys, one of the interesting things about this, this program is I'm kind of looking at it with Casey over the past couple of days, uh, just navigating through it is super easy. Diagnostics are really easy. If you're an integrator and you're trying to diagnose something, see if it's online or not. Um, they really did make this interface as easy as possible. I've, yeah, I've, I've programmed a few, uh, systems before uh, in my day, and um, I've always liked the systems that were um, that were that were much easier, of course, from a programming standpoint. They've they've done a really good job here with the interface. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's been um, it is design is a huge part of what we do, and mm -hmm. you know making that as as seamless as possible is a huge um, a huge driver for our yeah. our design and our engineering team. You know, just with the uh, the little bit of setup that we've done here today, guys. Um, you know, with the few de the devices that we have on this system and the switch and everything. Um, and with Casey even explaining what he was doing, we still had it set up in like 15 minutes. So uh, hopefully that kind of lands the point home with integrators out there who are watching uh, how easy the system is to set up. I think I had the the micro set up in about three minutes when I set it up the other day. Uh, it was very easy. You know, you you plug it in, it fires up. You open up the app on your iPad and it kind of just walks you right through it, has you connect to the um, to the Wi-Fi, and then boom, you're up and running. And it was again about about a minute or two worth of work. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. 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 I think that speaker we had before, it may have been when we when we wiped it, it may have been a different speaker, and this may still be that old Wi-Fi. So I'm just gonna hide this one, get rid of it. Okay, cool. Well, it's gonna happen. Not not in our room anyway for our purposes today. That's okay. And uh, this is this is actually an interesting thing too. Like if there's other devices that are in this in the house but not necessarily part of this system, you can hide them from the um, you can hide the device from the screens here, so you don't get kind of mixed up or confused on you know which speakers in which room. So 
speakers like in the bathroom or something that might not apply to this room, we could always hide those if you wanted to. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, you know, if you want to, maybe you're throwing a party or you don't want somebody to have access to something, uh, that's one of the, the nice things with, with what we're doing here. Um, sure. Let's see. Master bedroom speaker. This is actually a nice page too, just on its own, because you have the MAC address and IP address of everything that's on the network. So if you're doing some network management, you can probably find everything you need to know about those uh, all those devices right here on this one page. I know a lot of guys will keep like a, a spreadsheet or something, but a lot of good information here. Oh yeah, and just to dive a little deeper into that too, um, if you type in ARP, it gives you a, a scan of everything on your network. So that's oh. one of my, yeah, so that's, that's another fun thing that we have here is that Great. you can uh, get IP addresses, and, and this is not only Josh controlled devices, but also mm -hmm. um, pretty much any any device on your network, like a iPhone or a computer. If you want to find sure. it, we can find it too. And in this case, I want to find your master bedroom devices because this connect. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Um, that master bedroom speaker is interesting, but I'm not too concerned about it. We'll see when we start playing with some stuff what happens. Sure, there. that's okay. It's actually good for people to see because if they do uh, have a misstep in the programming by accident or something, how easy it is to go in and kind of trace your steps back and fix what you uh, fix what you initially did. Yeah, and it's it's funny right before we were on this call, it was. One to one, and it was, of course. Uh, that's how that's how it always works, man. <laughs> that's how it works. So, yeah, I'm interested to see what the case is here. Is that yeah. the speaker. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll go in here. We'll see what happens. We'll sure. adjust. Um, but anyway, Jason, if you wouldn't mind giving me a command here, um, and then I should probably give you back the screen because we want to show your TV. Uh, basically switching. Actually, before we do that, I'll give one quick command on my end. Um, sure. I, I, we were talking before this. I know you're a, a Stranger Things fan or a American Horror Story. What, what would you like sure. to watch right now? What's what's? Um, let's just do Stranger Things. Let's let's keep it uh keep it pretty universal. I know I don't know anybody who doesn't like that show. <laughs> All right. So perfect. So in this case, um, we have one TV, so we don't have to specify even when typing in commands. Uh, or giving voice commands to any micro in the home where to do that because we know by default there's one TV option to display this content. Uh, but you'll see in this bottom bar here, this is a great way for us to test commands in Josh. And when I press enter here, this is where we should now see uh, Jason can confirm, uh, but then I'll also give him his screen back uh, that Stranger Things is now popping up on his Roku here. Yeah, TV. so... Guys, what you hopefully saw there, I switched cameras so you could see my TV, and sure enough, there's Stranger Things playing from the Roku. So I, I just stopped sharing my screen, Jason, so I think if you're able to show your camera. Yeah, absolutely. So let me switch back over here to my camera. And boom, okay, cool. All right, and then I don't know if anybody saw, saw the TV as well, um, but yeah, we're on the, the Roku menu, but now the experience should be something like, um, I don't want to wake up your Josh micro over there, Jason, so I'm not going to yeah. give it a full command. Uh, but if now that we're watching Stranger Things, if you wanted to give it a command, like um, listen to uh, the Beatles or, or like a Rolling Stone by Bob Dylan or mm -hmm. whatever else. And then this is something that we we do occasionally see. Sometimes it's dependent on network uh, to touch on this this main menu here. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it depends on the network. Uh, it doesn't really matter what Roku model it is. Um, but if you if you give a command to Josh, so if you say the wake word and then um, press play, it'll bypass this menu and you can it'll just start watching this episode as if you're oh, okay. pressing that button verbally. Cool. How about some uh, How about some Bob Marley? You Bob Marley fan? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's chill. Okay. And then uh, then the uh, the command, just so everybody knows, is okay, Josh, right? Correct. Yeah. So that's the that's one of our wake words. That's the wake word that's out of the box. Um, if you just woke it up, it's probably you know listening now at this point. 
Okay, Josh. Play Bob Marley. Now playing Bob Marley. Cool. And that was a little feedback that I got from the little Josh micro itself. So I was able to hear that from the micro. And then I just heard something. Of course, it's probably one of the quieter songs. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys can hear this or not, but I'm going to try to crank up the volume. And you should actually be able to go to the micro. Is the micro dial illuminating a purple LED? Um, right now, it's like multicolored. Okay, so it's still listening to you at this point, I believe, or it might still be. I can't see, so it's... Oh, here, let me switch cameras back so you can see my... Um, so I've got oh, yeah, right so it's, here. yeah, and I was, just, and I was just waiting kind of for the next command. Um, okay, do you want to try again? No, I mean, is it? I see in the the album artwork on my end that it is playing. Oh, yeah, Bob it is. Let me, yeah, yeah. The, I think the volume is just really, really low. But I could hear it. Like, if I take my headphones off, I can hear it slightly. Let me see if I can get some more volume out of it. Sorry, give me just a second. And I did change that um, that output to fixed, so we should be good there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And if, um, um, Oh, it uh, it tr it tried I know to play what's from, happening. I tried to play from Spotify. I don't have a Spotify account. Yeah, I know what's yeah, I know exactly what's happening there. So in that case, that's when I see that on my end, and this is another yeah. good troubleshooting tool or tip mm -hmm. for for viewers out there is that um, if you give a music command and you see that the album artwork on the Josh end is basically jumping back and forth from other options, uh, that is a good indication that one of your streaming services is not signed in. Gotcha. So let me let me refresh your services on our sure. end. Um, I think maybe you maybe you had a Spotify account or you had a free one I, in there at some point. I and then used to a long time ago, yeah, yeah, before I switched over to Tidal. Um, if, if this is something that you think the integrators would actually run into in the real world, do you want to show your screen and show them how you would, how you would kind of refresh this or? Yeah, yeah, let me get back on my screen here. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> that reminds me, I probably should delete those old Spotify accounts from my uh, from, from all my Sono stuff. Yeah, actually, before I do this, that's a good a good uh, kind of sanity check. Um, would you mind deleting that Spotify account from yeah. your Sonos app or sure. your Sonos controller? Sure, give me just a moment. And Spotify remove. Okay, cool. No more Spotify. All right, perfect. So yeah, and that's the case where with Josh, we talked about it a little bit in our last uh, webinar, but the way that we handle music search is we're going to ping all of the services that we think are accessible, and then mm -hmm. once one service gets back to us with the most accurate result as quickly as possible, uh, that's when we'll start playing something or trying to. Sure. And that might be a case where when you ask for Bob Marley, where I go, Spotify can do that really easily. Yeah. But then... We but if I don't have a Spotify account. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, and that's, you know, for, it's it's a simple a simple thing. Um, and, you know, it's easy to forget, but it's one of those aspects of installing Josh and all of its, you know, parts and, and all this other, you know, uh, services and, and mm -hmm. with where, you know, if, if one part of this isn't, isn't dialed in, um, you know, we're going to get some kind of error and, you know, fortunately, I, I've seen it all, I think, at this point. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm not too surprised where I'm like, oh, I, I kind of have an idea where to go to. But, you know, the, Casey, this is this is just one of those things, though, and this is this exactly proves the point of something I've said for 20 years of, of doing, you know, home installations, at least. You know, w w before you leave the customer's house, check everything. Make sure everything works that they're going to potentially use. Because, uh, you know, if you if you if we didn't check this and we just left it at it as is, the customer would be calling the integrator tonight, probably saying, hey, my music's not playing. So great, great idea to just make sure, guys, when you're setting up a system like this, check every single little piece of functionality to make sure it's all working. Exactly, exactly right. So in this case, um, what I just did is I refreshed our Sonos services. So this is mm -hmm. a, another case of, you know, let's say that 
your client, you know, only has a tune in account, which is like the free service you get with Sonos. But then, right. you know, they, they see a Josh video or you talk, you tell them as the installer about like the, the benefits of adding in one of these premium services after the fact where mm -hmm. Josh is always pinging the network, the Sonos system, trying to, you know, determine if any changes have been made. Mm -hmm. um, but you can always force that refresh with this refresh okay. button on, on um, the Casey, Travis just asked in the question box, can you verbally request from a certain streaming service from Josh? Uh, or is yeah. it just the default? You can't. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like, as I was saying, our services, we, we always pick the most, the quickest to respond with mm -hmm. the best, most accurate result. However, if you prefer like a, you know, a higher quality, um, you know, saw like a higher quality version of a song or of an artist's album, uh, you could always specify if you had say Apple Music mm -hmm. or Tidal. Uh, you could always say, listen to Bob Marley on Tidal and then that mm -hmm. will direct us to that service. Excellent. So now that I've refreshed things, let me go to my, my rooms here as well and just double check that when I go to my master bedroom, go to my speaker view here, I can also see, and this is kind of the same experience you have with the app. I can also mm -hmm. find all Jason's favorites now, so now I know what he likes listening to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I can, I can also search here and then just confirm that what we're seeing on our side from a search perspective are the services in the little mm -hmm. text box here. Yeah. The, the thing that blows me away about stuff like this, Casey, is like from your guys' side of things, like all the coding and programming that has to go in to like make all this work. I'm not an engineer and that stuff to me is just, it's just mind blowing, man, how, how smart this stuff is. Yeah. And this, it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, our engineers have done a great job with it. And you know, that's, that's something where we're very aware. And I think we're going to show it on the app as well. Um, mm -hmm. and then in just a second here, uh, where you can group audio zones in your home, just like mm -hmm. using the Sonos app where we want right. to, we want to make sure that, you know, it's, it's on the same level or as close to it as, as possible, uh, to give you as many features as, as we can, with, sure. you know, our spread of whether it's, audio video lighting mm -hmm. um i know we talked about getting you some philips u bulbs where yeah you know, that'd be that'd be pretty fun to put the color changing and temperature sure. and all that too so yeah. um yeah i mean it's a lot of a lot of work but you know it's it's that's the whole point of josh is that right it consolidates all these devices on one really easy to use interface that seems to be say. such a true thing in our industry anyway is that you know to make something work like magic or seem so simple the, the work that went into that is just, it's astonishing how much, you know, we, we do things like TV calibrations and we have automatic calibration now for certain things. It's like, yeah, this is really easy to do, but you have no idea what went into it to make it this easy. That's one thing I just admire so much about software guys and, and coders and programmers and engineers and stuff. It's so cool. Yeah, it's if we do our jobs right, uh, it seems like magic. But yeah, it's right, exactly, exactly. So. Um, and then, yeah, just to, you can see this on the Josh app as well, um, but something mm -hmm. else I wanted to show here, um, sorry, is just on the TV side, if we had multiple inputs, sorry, uh, on the view section here, uh, this is where we would also see more inputs listed here. So you could always, you know, pick up your, your phone or your iPad and mm -hmm. manually switch between sources. Uh, there's a remote UI kind of similar to an Apple TV remote app where mm -hmm. you can scroll up and down, select, uh, you know, just volume, things of that nature, uh, where, you know, it's, you don't necessarily need a remote if you're working with all Josh controlled sources, being a Roku or a dish cable box. Um, we have Comcast support coming soon as well. Oh, cool. Uh, for cable. That would be yeah, a big so one. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's very exciting. Uh, that's, you know, I can't give you an ETA, but that's something that our team is very excited about. Yeah, no, that's cool. That'll be huge. Yeah. So you know, whenever they roll that firmware update. But anyway, so that's that's the thing is, is again, just that feature parity, that access, is giving you as much power and control as we can uh, with all of our, our services and, and devices. Excellent. So, I do have the uh, iPad here. If you want to show the app at any point, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Uh, let me unshare my screen. And I think it'd be awesome if, <laughs> yeah, so I think I think we're on the the audio input now on the receiver, but it, I think let's let's do another kind of fun voice switching, you know, interaction with you there. Sure. Uh, so I know we were talking about Christopher Nolan, Hans Zimmer. Uh, mm -hmm. and if there's Inception, I think it's on Netflix. 
Yeah. Uh, feel free to give Josh another like a video command. And this is also something I think we talked about last time, but Josh is kind of as smart as the verbiage and the phrasing that you use. Yeah, so you did, we give, did talk, talk a lot about that. Yeah, so to give to give you know the audience an example of that too is when I give music commands, I always use listen, and I always give watch when I give video commands. Is that, mm -hmm. that immediately kind of divides that fork in the road for us to find you that right content versus more ambiguous verbs like play or turn on? Yeah, um, both of those work. I just is a little more effort for Josh to try to find you what actually is the right content in that case. And, so, and God forbid a band has the same name as a movie or something. <laughs> oh yeah. When I, when I, when I do trainings, my ultimate example of this is I tell dealers, like if I say turn on Chicago, what, what are you going to oh, turn yeah. on? What the heck does that mean? <laughs> yeah. The band or the movie or the soundtrack yeah. to the movie, sure. any show. Yeah. Like there's, there's a million results for that. So, cool. um, yeah, feel free to give it a, another yeah. Netflix or a movie command or something, watch whatever. Okay, Josh. Watch Inception. Now watching Inception. There's this TV switching. There's Inception. Boom. Yeah. So, and again, that, yeah, and usually we see that menu. It will fade out, and we'll start, you know, playing whatever the uh, show or movie is. Uh, mm -hmm. But if it doesn't start fading out after like five seconds or so, then it's really easy. Just give it a follow up Josh command yeah. saying press play bypasses the menu. Easy. The, uh, the thing I, I really love about this and I've noticed this, maybe you too, maybe it's something with like our age group or something, but uh, I'm just so much more now using like uh, speech to text and, and stuff like that. And just in that quick command, having the movie come up that quickly, um, you know, I, I would love to do like a, like a race to see how long it takes for me to pick up the remote, turn everything on, find it, press play versus just doing the voice command. I bet you it's double, triple, maybe quadruple the amount of time doing it manually. So I, I'm, I'm all about the voice stuff. I think this is really, really fun. Yeah, especially if like you're, you know, you're binge watching a show or something and you know what you want to watch. That's mm -hmm. where, that's where we're really well suited. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of times and like, you know, for voice, what the reason why we built out the, the app in our end and, you know, we're always, more than happy to incorporate a, you know, a remote as well from another control system or, you know, a, another provider is we're, we realize voice isn't the end all be all. There's always going to mm -hmm. be a, you know, a, a tactile surfing that people don't know what they want to watch. And, you know, sure. you know, that's part of the experience. So um, yeah, you know, with that voice is a great shortcut. If you know what you want to watch and, and it's, you know, part of our supported services, then that's, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a really cool wow factor as part of the experience. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we, the manual UI, uh, is never going to go away because people don't always know what they want. Sure, sure. You know, it, it's funny too because, you know, we are barely, I mean, just barely scratching the surface of what the system can do. Uh, I just got a little AV system here uh, with, a, with a matrix switch. Um, some of the bigger systems that you guys have been involved with before, uh, I mean, I could just imagine, you know, coming home from work or school or something and, you know, walking up to my front door, giving a couple voice commands, taking off my backpack, my jacket and stuff, giving another voice command. And, you know, by the time I'm in the house and settled, my music's already playing. My lights are already the way I want them to be. Um, you know, I, and I just have it at my own house here. Just haven't gotten that crazy about it yet. But uh, um, that was the thing about doing the Philips bulbs. Is I wanted to get a pair yesterday and they were they were sold out, unfortunately. So I wasn't able to do them. But uh, what are some of the bigger um, what are some of the more common systems that you guys are involved with that are on the bigger scale of things? Are they bigger homes with tons of lights and tons of zones or what, do, what are you guys seeing so far? Oh yeah, I've had it's it's been pretty fun going around the country. Um, you know, I've been training dealers, visiting uh, some of our bigger projects as well to make sure that mm -hmm. things are um, as as tightened up and you know give our our dealers that that handholding as well because you know we understand this is a new technology and there's you know there's a lot of questions around that. So our mm -hmm. our tech support team is super helpful. Uh, yeah. But also, you know, when we're in the neighborhood, we definitely love to check in with, you know, our, our dealers and make sure that their clients are having a great experience. Oh, that's great. Um, so I've had the, you know, the pleasure of, of going to a few sites and, um, you know, we've, we've been in all sorts of homes. Um, I'd say one of the craziest that we were in since I've been with Josh, um, which has been a while, <laughs> uh, is back in the Mac mini days. And, and now since then, we've moved some micros in there as well. Uh, we were put into a, a really big spec home in LA, like in the nine figure mark. Um, wow. And 
you know, that was a crazy Crestron system, Lutron. I think there were over like 100 or 200, like just Lutron keypads, which Ooh. gives you an idea of how many lighting loads and shades and everything else was in there. Oh, man. Um, so there's no, there's no shortage of devices or, or like limitation there with us. Um, it just is, you know, the, the system is very scalable. And the same goes for audio video distribution where, you know, it's, whether it's an 8 by 8 or 16 by 16 or, you know, right. however, whatever you want to throw at us, um, sure. we can, we can facilitate that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whether it's with Josh and, and you know, an AV Pro uh, environment or if it's Josh with another control system in the mix and we're, you know, using the logic that's dictated by those systems. Uh, sure. On our end as well. Good, good. That's excellent. Uh, Casey, I've got, uh, we've got maybe uh, about 15 or 20 minutes left to fill up the hour. Um, I didn't know if there was any other questions anybody had. I'll take a quick look at the question box and uh, I don't see any new questions since Travis's last one, guys. So if you guys uh, have any questions, feel free to get those, get those kind of rolling in. Uh, while we're at it, just to give you a sort of a visual uh, on the app itself, this is on an iPad. Uh, gives me a nice little welcome message there. Good afternoon. It knows where I'm at, of course, telling me what the weather is like, which, uh, you know, it's very nice in Florida right now. So thank you for uh, <laughs> thank you for being nice weather uh, during during this time, at least. Uh, but, yeah, it's a really sleek app. And again, I don't have a lot going on here just because I have just a, such a small system. But if I wanted to go through any of the sub menus here, I can see exactly uh, exactly what's going on with my whole system and with this particular room. And it doesn't have to be necessarily an iPad, guys. You can, of course, use your iPhone as well, right? Yeah, iOS is, is fully supported now. That's our most up-to-date platform. Yeah. Uh, Android is on its way. Uh, we're right. very, we're very uh, optimistic that Android support will be on par with iOS later this year. Sure. Um, it just it seems like most clients are iOS people, so that was sure. prioritized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, be cool. Like, since you, there's not like lighting or shades there yet, mm -hmm. the Philips Hue um, shortage. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> that would that and toilet paper. Everybody was grabbing that. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, yeah. During quarantine, but uh, one of the really cool things with Josh as well is that you can give multiple commands at once to really kind of set the mood. Uh, so, mm -hmm. for example, like you know, dim the lights and listen to soft jazz or something. Yeah. Um, you know, those those types of commands are really powerful because you're giving more than one at a time. So. And didn't uh, you guys did you guys patent that being able to do multiple commands? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's one of the patents that we're we're very excited about now. That is now. cool. Yeah, on our on our side. Um, yeah, that's that's a huge part of voice and making it convenient and and more kind of humanistic. Uh, mm -hmm. That's really gonna you know just makes a difference with the experience. Um, but one of the one of the things we could try is just to show that off in real time here is if you ask Josh like what time it is or what's mm -hmm. the weather or something and then give it a music command uh, for example you know listen to Bob Marley again or, mm -hmm. or whatever whatever else you, you can think of sure. uh, that would just show like a comp what we call a compound command um, okay. for, for the audience um, and then yeah you can even go in the app and kind of show like the grouping and kind of yeah. how the interface looks there too okay so I'll ask about the weather and I'll tell it to play some music okay yeah okay Josh what's the weather like today and play Alice in Chains. In street, Petersburg, it's currently partly cloudy and 80 degrees. Now playing Alice in Chains. Nice. So, there you go. So you got two things in one. Um, you know, and, and I can see my end is changing uh, with the album artwork to play some Alice in Chains. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're hearing it on your end, but you should see in the Josh app and the Sonos app and door that that content is being found now through title. So I've got Master Bedroom Audio, Josh Micro, and Master Bedroom Audio is, is playing. It's just really quiet. I might have to just fiddle with some volume settings here, but um, it's showing up in the app as Master Bedroom, um, along with the other devices that are in here. And it gave me the weather, so yeah, that's great. That's good. One thing I wanted to point out too, this is just because I'm just a nerd about this, uh, especially with a big giant screen like this. I'm all about the dark mode, so thank you for putting that in there. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it's also the, like, I, we were talking about the black micro as well uh, yeah. you know, beforehand, but yeah, yeah, the dark the dark mode on the app, I think is it's definitely my go-to. So I well, I mean, you're in, a, along. you're in a dark room or something, and you got this you know, huge iPad three inches from your face, and all of a sudden you open up the app and it just blasts you with light. So the, the dark mode is, 
dark mode's cool. Uh, there are a couple a couple questions come in. Uh, one from Chris. Uh, a few words about the Control Four integration with Josh AI. Yeah, any uh, I'm not I don't have the question box open right in front of me. Any specifics on the Control Four integration? Chris? Uh, no, he just he just said a, a few words about it. So you guys obviously work with Control Four and all the stuff's integrated, just like kind of what we're looking at today, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with Control 4, uh, the end experience with Control 4 and with Crestron Simple are, is somewhat similar uh, or on par today. Uh, but with Control 4, with our driver, once you, you plug in our driver into your Composer project, uh, we once Josh is on the network, so we go through the app process that Jason went through the other day, Micro gets on the network and starts auto-discovering everything, like your mm -hmm. Sonos is or Lutron or anything else, Phillips Hue. Sure. Um, then... That, that same idea takes takes hold of Control 4, where the driver is on, in your Composer project, and then we start pulling in your entire configuration from Control 4. So that's where, when I work with dealers on that front, uh, it's very important to name devices and label things in a voice-friendly way, or in mm -hmm. the way that we would recommend it in Control 4, or another system like that, uh, because we're going to pull in exactly what you've already done in that side of things. And that, with Control 4, that has to do with uh, lighting, shades, switches, thermostats, um, audio, video zones, and the sources going into those zones. So if you have, you know, Apple TV, Roku, cable, Xbox, like all these different sources through Control 4 with, that, with those proxy IDs and that logic that are going, you know, from your centralized matrix to a, an output zone, uh, we're going to already pull in that information and know that these sources um, like that, that little source menu that I showed you where we just showed the Roku right now right. Is source in Jason's place. Uh, that source menu right off the bat is going to show you that we have all these you know, sources that Josh knows are, are controllable or, or we can get to those sources and then control you know, the Roku or the ones that we work with from there too. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Barry has a question too. Um, he says, maybe not an appropriate question for here, but what are the costs for a customer and startup costs for the dealer? This might be an offline question for Barry, huh? Yeah, Barry, feel free to reach out to um, hello at josh.ai or sales at josh.ai. Um, we also have a, a dealer application on our website. If you go to just josh.ai slash integrators, I believe. Um, so we're happy to have that conversation. Uh, I can tell you, you know, that, that Josh is on par with any other entry level control system from a price perspective for like MSRP. Uh, we you know, are happy to have that conversation, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, see if it's a fit for your business here. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I can share when, uh, no, I'm, that's, when, I'm, when I'm alive. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. Chris says, thank you for the C4 information. Yeah, of course, Chris, if, um, if, if, any, if anybody needs any information on the Control 4 driver, um, again, hello at Josh, Casey, C-S-E-Y, at Josh.ai. Um, you know, feel free to ping me. I'm happy to, to get you that information, you know, the, the technical resources around that stuff. Excellent, excellent. Well, Casey, uh, we're kind of, kind of come up on our hour here. Uh, we got maybe 10 or so minutes left if you wanted to uh, show anybody anything else, any other tricks or anything else in the um, setup that you wanted to show anybody. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of, uh, kind of freestyle it here for the last few minutes. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's do a fun, let's do a scene, because I think that, sure. that'd be fun. Yeah. So, let me let me share my screen here, and this is where this is where people will get to have some more fun with Josh. Um, where, oops, that's not okay. That's not me. Um, where is my screen share here? I uh, may have to do this real quick. Oh no, you still you still should have the second tour. Yep. There you go. So I'm, we're back on my screen. Yep, you got it. All righty. So with scenes here, this is my scenes page, and this is, you know, I'm going to jump in and get a little advanced. I'm going to kind of nerd out, so bear with me. No, um, go for it. This is the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we have an entertaining scene, or I don't know, what what, what scene do you want to create, Jason? Um, I, I'll, I'll do one that I normally do when I have friends over. I When I have friends over, I want the uh, big stereo playing, and I also want all of the Sonos's in the other rooms, bathrooms and stuff playing as well. So sort of like maybe a party mode or something like that. All right. This is gotcha. where the lights would really come in handy too, but they did not have the ones I wanted in stock, unfortunately. Yeah, if we had, if we had some lights and some machines, we'd be able to play with all that here. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little about sharing my screen too. It's like kind of- It's a little laggy. Down. Yeah. 
I've noticed that before sometimes. All right, so we have our entertain scene. And you'll notice there's actually already an image here. So kind of based off of what your scene name is, we have our own photos here that we've pre-curated. Oh, cool. So, uh, if you had like a good morning scene, you may see something like the sun rising with the dog or, or you know, basically like whatever the scene name is, there'll be a photo that correlates. You, of course, can always upload your own from your desktop or iPhoto library or take one cool. from the app and upload it here too. Um, but this is also where for your control four guys out there, uh, you can add in any control four macros based on the scene type here. Um, a normal scene is just something controlled by Josh. And I'm going to bypass the room assignment, user access. Those are more kind of privacy related. Right now, the room assignment more has to do with um, seeing this scene as its own tile, just like a TV or a music player or another device tile in that room's um, layout in, in the app interface. But the uh, what I would do here with music, and you'll notice we're actually doing a whole scenes kind of revamp, um, and that's going to be rolling out later this year as well. So we're very excited with the the uh, updates that are coming there. Stay tuned for more in a few months. But uh, with music here, this is where I could select you know individual speakers of yours, and I could play you know music in certain rooms, or if you just want to play something everywhere, it's that easy just to select all music players, mm -hmm. play music resume and now i can either select an artist album or song or this is where with our sonos favorites access this is how we access a favorite is through a josh scene so i could always you know play one of your favorites here if you wanted to, sure. to do that sure what do you what do you want uh just do the alice in chains all right so alice in chains we got that we'll bump it up a bit and this is where in the custom commands text box again this is where kind of that ease of use of programming comes into play where I could select, let's say I had lighting and thermostats and shades and, and other devices here as well. Um, but I don't necessarily need to go and select all these tiles. I could just type in what I want Josh to do here as well. Mm -hmm. So I could also say, you know, play Alice in Chains everywhere. And when I give Josh a command like everywhere, that's signaling to it to hit every one of those devices throughout the home. So the same thing goes based off of our room configuration, like listen to music on the first floor or in the backyard and we know what rooms and what zones are yeah, under those particular cool. areas so i could accomplish the same thing as what this tile is doing by writing it in here however i don't want to i don't want to replicate or give it some sort of like contrasting uh command because i would mm -hmm. obviously be confusing for the system so i want to cancel that uh, but this is also where in the commands text box, you could, you know, just type in what you want as an end user. Like, let's say that, you know, mom and dad are going out uh, for a, a dinner or something, and they're leaving the nanny at home with the kids. And they don't want to have to bother you as the installer to, you know, create a good night for the nanny scene that leaves, you know, a certain light on or something, but turns everything else off in the house. Sure. And this is where they could go in the app. Uh, the web portal is more of a dealer tool, but we do have some clients who are more technically savvy who who do use it. Mm -hmm. um, but they can just go in the app, type in what they want to have is, you know, turn off all the inside lights, stop, you know, turn off all the TVs and leave the porch light on or, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever they want to throw in there. And that's, you know, essentially creating that, that scene on the fly without having to, um, you know, without an a installer having to remote in or, you know, program additional macros in that case. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because actually, that's actually a great question is, you know, um, how much of this does the end user have control over? Can they set up certain things themselves and maybe play with some of the scenes? I'm sure they don't have full access, but do they have a little bit at least? Yeah, so they can, they can create their own scenes. Um, and then also we didn't cover it. That's more of just like a general programming thing, but yeah, your you know your master bedroom, for example, where we have the micro and and everywhere else, we could also easily call that Jason's room and sure. add that name. So whatever whatever you want to call a room or a device, we can add that in there, and then Josh mm -hmm. will know to you know whatever however somebody's referring to that space, as long as it's in there, we'll understand what they're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a great way to work around you know multiple users in a home, as well as you know as we as we go around the country here different accents and how people are, are misheard because yeah. we have we have some clients in florida actually who are have a little thicker southern accent than you oh sure <laughs> and, yeah oh yeah and they oftentimes say foyer um but it often gets mistranslated in the speech oh, sure. 
for your. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So that's that's all. That's awesome. Yeah. So those those types of nicknaming or aliasing changes, those are all capable through the app. Mm -hmm. um, that also circles back to user permissions and roles, where right. depending on what role you as the installer set up with your client and how mm -hmm. hands on they want to be, um, you know, that kind of dictates what they can and can't do. Yeah. Um, the other the other thing I just love so much about this whole program in general, Casey, is just the kind of the safety and the security of all of it. You guys take that so seriously uh, with, you know, your data and saving all your voice commands. And um, you guys take that to, to such a new level of, of security. I'm very, very admirable of that. Yeah, I mean, with, with uh, you know, the other kind of mass market options out there and, and with microphones in their homes, um, it's... You know, you have the biggest search engine, the big, mar biggest marketplace in the world with their assistance. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, a lot of valid concerns in this industry with, sure. you know, what, what they are listening to and what data they're collecting and how they're using right. that. And, uh, you know, that's that's a case where we're a home automation system. The value in our system is, you know, controlling your home and making that experience as crazy as it can be. And, you know, that's what we're concerned about. We're not going to sell mm -hmm. data to third parties. We give, you know, that full transparency in our chat history. So mm -hmm. that's actually something that I want to, I don't want to get too, I want to get the scene uh, created as well before we, we sign off here, but just to show you the chat history really quickly. Yeah, go for uh, it. This is a case where um, we can see, you know, your what's the weather like today in Boy Allison Chains. And this is a, the number one troubleshooting uh, tool for integrators where we see, uh, and for our support team, where, you know, what commands you've given to Josh in this case is actually me typing things in and I can kind of see those in blue here. Right. Um, but this is where, you know, maybe you said turn on, but it was actually misheard as like Turner or yeah. turn it or something. And there was like a slight lost in translation, you know, mm -hmm. part of that command. And in that case, that's where, you know, when a client also sees that and, and you can see the chat history in the Josh app, um, you know, that that's where that transparency, that ability to be part of that experience, it tells them, you know, hey, like, I understand why this didn't work now. You know, maybe yeah. I need to enunciate a little better. Right. Or, you know, Josh doesn't have a, it was Cinco de Mayo, so there's no, there's no drunk mode yet. So, you know, yeah. you're very, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've learned to be very clear with what I say to Josh. Yeah, that's, that's awesome too, man, because, you know, there's a lot of times, like I said before, I've been using speech to text a lot. And like certain things I say, it always messes up. And I would love to like, this is so cool because I can go back and look at the history now and be like, oh, no wonder it never plays that band correctly because I'm always saying it wrong or something like that. So that's I like that it has that history. That's really cool. Yeah. And we talked about that last time, I think, too. But that's, yeah. that's another challenge with all these artists is like if I ask to listen to Adele, is it A-D-E-L-E -E or A space D E L L? And that's yeah. a case where like we've seen that happen. And now we've mm -hmm. created those patches and that. And that's where our natural language processing uh, engineers and and our team has essentially cr it continued creating that intuitiveness um, around the Josh experience based mm -hmm. off of you know how we are hearing things and yeah. working working within the limitations of that technology. Uh, so to get back to my scene here, uh, this is the case where you'll notice that we don't have um, video players here. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that is is how we've kind of built out our back end of video distribution. And you could always give a video command as a custom command. So I could always say like watch Stranger Things and it would it would do it. Um, however, since we're playing music, including your connect going through your receiver, I don't want to give it a conflicting command here as well. Sure. Um, like two different types of content. But now with the triggers, this is where we have a lot of fun where you could say entertain. You could say, you know, like the party is here. The party is starting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or is yeah. starting. And this is where, again, not to nerd out or get too deep into the weeds, but we are very flexible with syntax in our triggers. So if you use um, an ellipse here and then the bar underneath your delete key, and you can add basically required variations. So, and optional. Oh. Yeah, and optional ones. So you might have seen this in the Josh training that I put you through. Yeah. But uh, if you add a bracket here, around the, where's my bracket, there we go. So now I can either say party is here, the party is starting, mm -hmm. um, as long as I say some combination of this and yeah. it could or not include the, 
Um, uh -huh. Now I've created like one string here, but it actually accepts, you know, right now, like four variations of saying basically the same thing. That is super cool. So you can kind of change it up if you want to. So, so you're not saying the same kind of maybe boring thing over and over and over again. You can change it up. That's cool. That's exactly. those, those are the kind of little things that, that I find that end users love when you can customize things before you showed where you can pick different pictures for your, uh, for your interface and you can even upload your own custom. This is the kind of stuff that like if I, when I showed like my dad something and I'm like, Hey dad, check this out. I pull out the iPad. I say something, music starts playing. And then there's a custom picture on there of the iPad of like maybe me and the family or, you know, me and him when we were a kid or when I was a kid or something like that. Those little touches are what people really love. And you guys really have that covered. It seems like. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, this is the custom channel. So, you yeah. know, as, as far as you can personalize it or want to, we want to right. enable that. Yeah. And that's you know part of the fun of the custom response here where you of course could do a default response, which is just like, you know, sure thing, you know, entertain or like now running your entertain scene or whatever. Right. But when you do a custom response, um, there's no adult filter here. So <laughs> whatever you type in as a response, like yeah. Josh will say that back to you. And I've, funny. I've seen it all. So, you know, I'll, don't I'll be play with sure. that after, after we get uh, off the webinar today, I'll, I'll, I'll fiddle with that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. So maybe with the custom response here, we'll just say, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Hide, hide your kids, hide your wife, because Jason. <laughs> um, so, but that's that's where if you add more here, Josh would cycle through uh, sure. your responses and uh, you know basically run through. So yeah, now Jason, uh, I can change this custom response if you don't if you don't want to use that. But um, if you'd be so kind as to give our scene a try, where you can say either entertain or mm -hmm. one you know the party is here, party is starting. Um, to show off that our scene that we just threw together here is is firing. Okay, Josh. The party is starting. Hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now we should be seeing uh, Alice and Shane's uh, as well. So if you go to devices on the Josh side of things, yep. we should see all of our music players now um, starting yeah. to play. Good. Alice and Shane's. Yep. And I've got. I can hear it. It's it's the volume's low, but it's definitely playing. That's excellent. Well, that's great, um, guys. I don't see any other questions in the question box. If you have any, we're kind of at our time limit right now. But if you have any last minute questions, uh, go ahead and pop those in. Uh, and while I'm waiting for those, uh, Casey, any parting words? Thank you so much for your time today. This is a this is a excellent partnership, and I'm really excited to see some of the installs that happen with 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 you guys and, and our switches and stuff. This is really cool. So thank you, thank you a bunch. Yeah, I you know again this. We had our first webinar that went super well, and and now you know to, to have this follow up one. Hopefully, hopefully you found it you know more fun from the partnership side of things to actually get oh, to play sure. with Josh, you get your hands yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, I hope the audience uh, you know learned a thing or two today. You know, definitely got their got their feet wet. Um, but as you said, we're just scratching the surface here. Um, there's yeah, there's so much absolutely. more to talk about, so much more to, mm -hmm. to program that. Um, you know, I, as, as you can tell, I'm trying not to jump around, but it's so hard not yeah, to. It's, I know, I, so much to show I know what you mean. Uh, maybe, maybe next time we meet up, um, I'll have a couple lights and maybe a couple more things we could, we could dig a little deeper. Uh, but uh, yeah, so thank you so much, guys. That, that does it for us today. Um, Casey, uh, I know you had mentioned before, if anybody has any specific questions, I, I sent the uh, email address out to everybody, but didn't you say it was hello at joshai.com? Was that the easiest one to get a hold of? You guys, uh, hello at Josh AI. Yeah, we're not we're not dot commers here, okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, dot hello at Josh AI. That would be a great email. That's most of our company sees that. And then, okay, I did I did promise a YouTube link, um, so I want to throw that in the chat, but I need to get there. Yeah, if you go to the um, question box, uh, if you have visibility to the question box, I think you do, uh, or you could type into the chat. Either one, and everybody yeah. will see it. I will just copy this into the um, into the chat real quick here, <laughs> sure. get in there, sure. uh, just so that if people do want to check out some more demo videos, things like that, they yeah. are more than welcome to. Absolutely. So if you share that, I'll share that with everybody. And uh, guys, that'll pretty much do it for today. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, we'll get this link here in a moment. And until then, guys, enjoy uh, enjoy the rest of your week. We've got a Weekend's right around the corner now. We're already at Wednesday.
Yep. Oh, yeah. Happy, happy Wednesday. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, happy, uh, you know, for those who don't know, it was Jason's birthday yesterday. So happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Jason. Thanks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, cool. I'm going to send this link out to everybody. And boom. Guys, feel free to click on that link to see some more demos on Josh AI. Casey, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for attending the webinar today. And we'll see you next time. Bye, Casey. Yep. Thanks. Thanks again, Jason. Sure thing. Talk soon. Bye. See ya.